I am Juice. I am Logan. You're with the Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science. So we are currently in downtown Bakersfield yep. here at the, uh, what would you say, the Buena, Buena Vista Museum. Museum of Natural History and Science. Mm -hmm. We've been kind of looking at some of the stuff out here, uh, kind of weird, kind of crazy, but um, we're going to come in here, we're going to check the place out. We've been, it's been on our list for, for quite a while. Quite a, quite a while. We've been, you know, trying to find some, uh, trying to find some places where we could bring you to and let's go. So these are Asian and African uh, animals. Yes. And these? then in the main floor in the exhibit yeah. uh, is uh, what the museum is, is known for, and that's fossils Okay. from the northeast of Bakersfield. Okay. They are from the Miocene era, which is 16 million years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. Bakersfield was underwater at that time. Oh yeah, that's what they keep telling me. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. It sounds about right, yeah. And so we were left with Shark Tooth Hill. Oh yeah. Out northeast of Bakersfield, and there are a lot of fossils out there, a lot of shark teeth. Okay. Yeah. So that's where we are very well known for uh, uh, the the fossil exhibit. Okay. Upstairs. You will see North American animals in this, uh, on the mezzanine level, uh -huh. and on level two, you will see uh, you will see gems and minerals. Okay. An excellent collection, and then a Native American uh, exhibit from the Yokuts Indians. Y -O -K -U -T -S. Oh yeah. Y-O-K-U-T-S. They are, are a local tribe. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And then you will see our new exhibit of Egyptian antiquities. Nice, I'm gonna look forward to that. So enjoy the museum. Thank you. Did we read about the yokuts at the, the, the West Kern Oil Museum? Yeah, we did. Yeah. When I was a young warthog. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing to see these animals, you know, from Asia and Africa, full size. I mean, I come in here and I see these lions and I'm like, Jeez, oh, Pete, these, these actually are pretty big cats. Oh. Uh, and then come over here to the tiger, and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I'm gonna die. Water buffalo. Look at this. It's crazy to think how big these are. I mean, first of all, look at this. <laughs> oh my God. That's just the most. That's just, just the head. That's just the head. I mean, that thing. And this thing is like, you, how many people do you think tried to want to swing on these tusks? <laughs> this is crazy. I, I, I hope none. <laughs> yeah, I hope none too. George the, George the giraffe is over here. His name's not Jeffrey. Oh, oh my nice. God, that is. Uh, ha, ha, ha. That's massive. This is impressive because it's like you know, you you go to a zoo and you're like, oh these. But standing next to them, you get an idea of how, how yeah, just this. seeing them on film versus actually like seeing how big they are, like right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like just for sex impression, look at how big that elephant is just compared to that zebra. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's just amazing. Yeah, that is just amazing. I looked up and saw this nice. baboon. I swear to God, I almost freaked out. It's gonna kill me. <laughs> you always think baboons are these nice, big, gentle. No, they're not. No, they're not. Hard oh, best. This oh, is the, crazy. Uh, poo -poo. The what? The the, the P -P -U -K -U. puku. It's the puku. And the red heart best. Jeez, peace. Look at the size of those horns. Or I no, I'm sorry, antlers. Yeah. Are they horns or are they antlers? <laughs> That's crazy. 
large tooth mako jaw. That's a water buck. Bony fish. Usually that's sometimes what your mother fixes for doing bony fish. <laughs> Megalodon is a word for an extinct group of sharks that means big toothed shark. Yeah. An adult sea lion and scapula shoulder blade bone. You want to see what the size of a megalodon is? There it is. <laughs> that is look at the teeth on that thing too. That thing's massive. Massive. Sawtooth shirts. Living breathing chainsaw. Yeah. So if you scan this you get the audio tour. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. Nice. You can see some of the shark teeth they found here in Shark Tooth Hill. Look at the size of some of these bad boys. Extinct hook tooth Miocene. Some more shark tooth fossil over here. So what was that, Logan? Oh, the white jaws in these cases are from modern day sharks. So these aren't like the megalodon where it's like extinct, so it's not like that, but these are all... Silver tip shark, there. snaggle tooth shark, short fin mako shark. Modern yeah, these are all from... Oh, here's something more about the megalodon. Yeah. It was the largest shark that has ever lived. It could grow up to 75 feet long and bigger than a school bus. That is about three times larger than today's shark. 14 to 16 million years ago, during the Miocene epoch, Megalodon called the area now known as Bakersfield home. Huh. During that time, our local area was under ocean and had abundant sea life. That's cool. So that's where all the, the shark tooth hill and all these, well, like, you know, these they were, the shark teeth. Well, like they were telling us when we walked in, it was like this Bakersfield used to be underwater. Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? <laughs> Hard to believe. <laughs> Time to come over here. Talk more about Shark Tooth Hill, Shark Tooth History. More fossils over here. This is crazy. I was looking at this up here. This is crazy. I, I'm not exactly sure what this is. Um, obviously, I think it's some type of aquatic dinosaur. But it's absolutely. I mean, here's a little drawing of it. Uh, right here this is pretty cool um, and to, to, to get an idea of the fact that ooh, sperm well but just to get the idea of the fact that that this town that it's in a desert it's in a valley was once underwater it's kind of crazy this is a juvenile baleen whale here's the bones of this this one's look here 13 12 to 13 feet it's pretty cool and i guess this i guess it's got to be like the head of a whale here but that's some more stuff here a little sea, sea lion Hey Santa. So we just braved our dreaded enemy. Stairs. Stairs. Yeah. Come up to the mezzanine level and it's like the first thing you see is a big black bear. Uh, um, you know, which I'm sure isn't even full grown. But still it's you know kind of impressive. Um the brown bears, there's a lot of different North American animals. You know, brown bears, bison. Uh, look at the, what in the, the world is up with these antlers? Is that a caribou? <laughs> caribou? Yeah. So you got a mountain lion here. Those things are big. Have you ever seen a mountain lion live? No. I have. These things are impressive. 
But these things are big. They also are called cougars. And we're not talking about the, uh, yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> not sports brand. Uh, we've got a bobcat or a lynx right there. This looks like some type of, or is it a coyote? Not it's a big a coyote, is But it's, again, pretty impressive. It's like, you look at some of the... North American elk. Yeah, these things are massive. These things are huge. Just, I mean, if you look at the head just alone, Stand next to that. Yeah, just that is just absolutely impressive. I mean, look at the antlers. <laughs> That's the grizzly bear. A grizzly. Big old grizzly bear. And he's smiling. Turn our toes. He's smiling or are you trying to kill me? <laughs> I think you just got a new picnic basket. <laughs> Fish. Rainbow trout. Another rainbow trout's up there. I once caught a fish this big. <laughs> yeah, at least there's one trout sign we know the location of. Yeah. I will say it once, I will say it again. I hate stairs. Yeah. I just hate stairs. Um, mostly because I got a bad knee. Mm -hmm. So climbing stairs is like painful every step I get. But we got up here to the third <laughs> level to check out this, the Native American and this, uh, what do you see? The, this the, exhibit is called the, Preparing for Eternity, Life and Death in Ancient Egypt. So, so I assume it's going to be something about relating to like, I don't know, mummification. Well, considering that it's right over there, let's go check it out. Yeah. Well, there it is. And it's not a very big exhibit, but this time before, oh my gosh, it's Elizabeth Taylor. Bust of Cleopatra the Seventh, as portrayed by Elizabeth Taylor in the film Cleopatra. <laughs> I gotta watch that movie. Yeah, I know. This looks like reading King Tut's name on hieroglyphics. And that's what this is here. Pharaohs and people of high rank were distinguished by having their names placed in a special capsule-like frames called cartouches. Below is an example of King Tutankhamun's cartouche so you can see here it is gives you the, it gives you the uh, gives you the marking and it tells you what it means that's full nomen or royal name was Sutan common I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that that is absolutely I'm lucky I can pronounce Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun. All pharaohs have multiple titles that were quite long and cumbersome. No kidding. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> the tomb of King Tut. Tutankhamun. Valley of the Kings. It's a wooden mummy mask here. A ceramic coffin fragment. Complete canopic jar. This jar represents the son of Horus named Dumatuf, who protected the mummified stomach of the deceased. Ooh. Hey, check this out. This is a mummified head replica of King Ramses. Oh, wow. This is the, uh, the second. Ramses the Great. I like some of them. I like some of this. Some of this over here is from the the um, the mummy fragment, the mats. I mean, this is. I mean, first of all, it's amazing that they even were even able to survive. But the fact that you know some of it was you know it's all torn apart. They even have to put some of that silicone gel in there to make sure this doesn't you know get uh, what. Wet, yeah. Doesn't absorb much. Yeah. Uh, replicas of Egyptian pharaohs and gods. Yeah, but this one over King here is. Tutankhamun. Yeah, but this one over here, votive sculpture of Thoth in the form of a baboon. I'm not sure what Thoth is. I don't it know. might be a, one of the Egyptian gods. Gods, yeah. 
There's a votive statue of the god Ptah. It's probably Ta. The original is from the Sigmund Freud collection. Original artifact dates to the Ptolemaic period. 332 BC to 31 BC. It's interesting to see some of these, uh, see some of the ancient cultures uh, from before. Sarc sarcophagus mask, wood. Egyptian late dynastic period in Nile Valley, baby, has withstood the test of time. Wow. Some jewelry here. Like a necklace and some bracelets. Roman Egyptian glass bracelet. That's interesting. Egyptian glass here. So what we got here, I mean, the, 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 the gal downstairs was like super excited about this exhibit. I can see why. This is really impressive to just have some of these Egyptian artifacts, even if they're replicas. The some are just... Egyptian gods were animals, right? Because I was like, to remember. Well, Anubis is a dog. Yeah, so I was like, that makes sense why they had that. Where was it? A baboon? Yeah. Votive sculpture of Thoth in the form of a baboon. And yeah. down here you have modern Horus replica. replica. Horus oh, must have been a, like. There's a bird. A falcon. Huh. Interesting learning about Egyptian gods. It's like you always learn about the Greek gods and. We came out the exit over here. They have a thing over here for the Egyptian hieroglyphic alpha, alphabet. Yeah. It says the Egyptians used hundreds of hieroglyphic symbols. Most of these symbols represent complete words, ideas, or two to three sounds at once. However, the 24 symbols shown below represent single sounds and therefore can be used in a manner similar to our modern alphabet. Huh. So each one of these little symbols here represented a letter. And then they would like just put the symbols over here on the uh, on the, uh, the the stone, and you'd have to read with the symbols. So you'd have to like be these like super. I don't want to say super smart, but you'd have to figure out what the world, yeah what that all means all that entails. So we, we turned over here. We saw all these different minerals. What are you looking at? Oh, which is interesting. Like uh, different types of quartz. We got one quartz here, quartz with calcite in the back. What? Another quartz. You look at that big old, what is it? Calcite variety. Calcite variety travertine. This looks like a giant piece of snot. It does. <laughs> but, you know, it's an interesting mineral. Mm -hmm. That's some calcite over here. Fluorite. Dog, Dog tooth, tooth calcite. calcite. Yeah. Huh. Stone to unite. Huh. Chips and variety, so it, it looks like that looks like the stuff that you would like find up at uh, what uh, Superman's home, mm -hmm. kryptonite. Not kryptonite, but you know the the other one, the one where he goes here, what he has here, the like the the like the Palace of Solitude or something. Like, oh, okay, you know now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's big. That is. What is this? It's a an amethyst. Rio Grande de Sul, Brazil. Oh my gosh. Let's learn about our Amethyst Cathedral. Kernite is yeah. named after Kern County. Really? Where Kernite was first discovered. Really? Yeah, here it is. It says the mineral Kernite was named after Kern County where it was first discovered. Of the 4,000 minerals worldwide, fewer than 10 have been named after a U.S. county. Wow. Because uh, one of the things we learned uh, when we were over at the Kern Oil Museum was that the Yokuts uh, were the Indian tribes that, that lived here. And so they got a nice little exhibit here for the Yokuts here. And I was looking down and I gotta show you this. Let me turn this around. That right there is a canoe. That's a canoe made out of reeds. You know, it, that is really super impressive. I mean, I, I've never seen a canoe made out of this before. Usually it's like you see a canoe you know, made out of wood, but yeah, this, this was this tool canoe with willow plush stick that would have been used for transportation throughout the lake and river system by the Yokuts. There's one of their. Would you, would you call it a hut, or where would you call it? House. House, yeah, I guess. Let me see. It's. Probably says here. It's a. It's, yeah, it's called a tule hut. A tule hut. 
truly hot. This is the same material that the, that the, no, that the canoe is made out of. So they were they were like you know industrious and in using whatever it is they had. But this is really cool. Look at that wolf back there. Oh wow. I came over here and I saw this and I'm like, oh a little basket. That's really cool. And then no, it's it's a it's a hat. It's a cap. As a matter of fact, if you look right there, that's a cap. That's a woman's cap. Right there, this is pretty cool. They got some arrowheads here. We come over here and all these just shells, these mosque shells. These are really nice. Look at that big clam shell. Jeez, or pizza. All well, the different the Native American medicine chests. So they have sassafras, soap root, willow bark. All this is tobacco. They had tobacco as a medicine. It says this medicine was and is used in various forms by the Cahillas or Rapahonoks, Mohicans, and Malasites, and others. Officially, the United States is a Pharmacopoeia from 6, 1863 to 1882. So yes, tobacco was used as a medicine at one point. So they got a little thing here, and it's a little interactive thing. It says, what's wrong with you? I have a fever. So, And then down here it tells you that you take yarrow, willow bark, elderberry, and sassafras for a fever. And then you, you turn it. I have a stuffy nose and a cough. And it says here you're supposed to take yerba, santa, and sassafras. So these are like, this is like the early, I have a break. This is like early, early um, medicinal let me just say, this though, tobacco was used for an earache. Not interesting. So this was like early, you know, medicinal, uh, you know, all natural ways of being able to cure certain, you know, elements that you had. Over here are the baskets. Baskets I was looking at, kind of looking for. Clam, oh, clamshell bead necklaces. So they. I always thought that was like a clamshell bead necklace was like, like something that was just done in, like, in the 60s and 70s or the hippie things, but I guess not. Uh, some more obsidian and some more arrowheads, more artifacts, some grinding stones, more baskets. Over here, some more necklaces, beads. It's a trade beads. Once the Europeans came to America, they began to trade their goods with the Native Americans among the coveted items were traded. Beads, trade beads. These were often glass coming from Venice or silver and brass coming from Germany. As the Native Americans created many types of baskets, there were baskets used for food gathering, gather food processing, carrying water, catching fish, and as bowls for eating. They're also used for cradle boards uh, to carry their babies. Nice. What'd you find? Oh, it's this exhibit right here. It says, these foods come from the Americas. So it's just like all food that we know, it's like, is it from America? Let me see. The bell pepper. Yes. It says, interesting, it says, Columbus came to the Americas looking for gold and spices, especially, especially pepper. He noticed people in the Americas cultivating colorful vegetables to spice their food. He thought they tasted like black peppers, so he named them peppers, even though they have no relation to the black peppers uh, and the pepper shakers. By the pie over here. Pumpkin pie? Pumpkin pie. Yes! yes! It says, pumpkins and all of the squashes were originally grown in South America. By the time Europeans arrived, squash was being grown all over North America as well. In fact, our word squash comes from the Massachusetts Indian word as squash, which means eaten uncooked. The vanilla in the ice cream was also developed in South America, but the milk comes from cows brought into the America by Europeans. Nice. This is the only part of the museum we haven't come here yet. Look at the, this, uh, the triceratops. And look, at this, look at this velociraptor. I mean, not very big, but. Looks like a Jurassic Park in the kitchen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>
But that's pretty impressive. I mean, look at the triceratops. I mean, look at the head over here. This thing's mm -hmm. huge. This thing is massive. Yeah. Of course, you know what they say. They say the, tr the triceratops is like the prehistoric version of a, a rhino, a rhinoceros, mm -hmm. because of the big horn in the front. Mm -hmm. More fossils over here. Look at the teeth on him. Saber tooth cat. Saber tooth cat. American lion. And great ground sloth. Picture from 1920s fossil excavations Jesus. at McKittrick. I mean, these are just amazing. You can find these fossils here. Yeah, these are kind of similar to the fossils we found over at, uh, or we saw over at the uh, West, West Cornwall Museum. The West Cornwall Museum, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were finding a lot of the same fossils over at McKittrick. What is that? That thing looks like something pure out of a... Nightmare. Yeah. That looks extinct shark. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> it's Petridus patelliformis. Dermal denticle. 280 to 345 million so, years ago. So what would be scarier? This bad boy or this bad boy? Hmm. Dimetron di Don. Probably the shark. Probably the shark, yeah. Would run go in the water. No. Wow, that's a big gator. Mm -hmm. Look at the size of him. Dinosuchus was the largest animal in the crocodilian family, reaching up to 50 feet in length. Dinosuchus was the dinosaur's worst nightmare. It would stalk the rivers and estuaries of North America, feeding on fish and dinosaurs that would come to close to the, that would come oh, too yeah. close to the water's edge. Another crocodilian sarcosuchus from northern Africa almost rivals dinosaurs in size. That's the massive. Fifty feet long. Can you imagine? Did they talk about alligators in the sewer at New York. No. What is this? How would you like to be, you know, swimming in the water with that thing? Oh, not be nice. Yeah, it would be good. Come on in, the water's fine. No, no. <laughs> what is that behind you, dude? Uh, I don't know. This is blue, it's generally blue. Holy crap. Titanosaurus femur. That's a femur. Yeah. Stand next to that. Okay, so how how tall are you? Five six. Five six. And that's just the femur bone. Yeah. Aren't we glad they uh, kind of died out? This group would be so well, that was a lot of fun. That was. I I, I, I haven't been here in a while. I uh, wasn't sure what to expect, but I mean, I saw some stuff I hadn't seen before. And um, reminded myself some stuff from the last time. But this is really cool. Uh, this is really, really cool. Yeah, I said, I can't remember the last time I was here, but I love looking around at all the different fossils. We got, what is it, especially like all the sharks and dinosaurs. Oh, the, yeah. Love the exhibit they had on the Native Americans, especially the, the, the village recreation. That was oh, really yeah. That was really cool. The tickets here are $10 mm -hmm. for adults, $8 for seniors, students, and children. Yep. And the two, the little ones, two years and younger, they're free. Yep. But this is really cool. You get a, a really, especially with a lot of animals, you get an idea of how big they really are. Yeah. You get an idea of other than one, there was like Shark Tooth Hill, how big some of these sharks were. I mean, a megalodon jaw was like ginormous. Ginormous. It, it was like you know that that eight foot uh, two, uh, uh, femur bone that you were standing yeah, that next. That was crazy. That was crazy, but. You, this is a great place to kind of like learn from and just, we were here for at least a couple of hours. Yeah, we were right here about like two hours. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Again, it's down here, downtown Bakersfield, uh, right, right across- Right here on Chester. Right here on Chester. I'm trying to figure out where it's across the street up from, but but it's really cool, it's really nice. And um, come on out and check it out. Yeah. 
So Logan, if they want to check us out anywhere else, where they go? If you want to check out the links to our social medias, you can find them at withkoju.com slash at Travel by Nature. They can find links to our Twitter pages, our podcasts, our Instagram for Travel by Nature. And we also have an Ask Me Anything tab, any tip jar if you're so generous. And uh, Logan, if they want to help out the channel, what do they do? You can hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share it to your friends. Yeah, share it to your friends. Leave us a comment. Make us a smile. <laughs> so, here in downtown Bakersfield at the Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science. I'm Goose. I'm Logan. This is Travel by Nature. Thank you for watching.